Uh, my name's Adam Wallace, um, here in Vancouver, BC, uh, Canada. Um, and uh, I guess I'm just going to share a little bit about myself and, and uh, my background, uh, my sporting background and kind of uh, what I've done uh, over, over my, my years and, and where I'm at now. So, um, yeah, uh, in terms of sports, um, sports has played a, a huge part of, of my life and um, kind of uh, um, making me who I am and helping me and achieve what I've achieved, you know, and gotten to where I've gotten uh, today and start off um, when I was quite young um, with uh, myself and, and Michael's, Mike Wallace's father, uh, Tony Wallace, um, uh, moving out to Canada and uh, and kind of setting shop out here and he was one of the he was the first one to kind of get me into into soccer as i'm sure michael knows as well um i'm sure michael had uh some experiences with soccer as well from a young age um so yeah i think i started when i was about three years old um with uh with tony coaching me um at a local club here in vancouver uh which is still around still functional the club and um and uh, yeah, so it, it, you know, soccer has been a big part of my life as, as far back as I can remember. Um, and uh, yeah, kind of just growing up, uh, played played a lot of different sports growing up, but soccer was kind of obviously with uh, with with our, with my dad um, uh, being a soccer coach and having a love for the sport. Um, you know, that was kind of the, the main sport around the house and always on TV and there was always a soccer ball in the living room to, to kick around and whatnot. So, um, yeah, uh, took a liking to that and, and, and got involved with that um, from a young age right up until I was, you know, um, 11 or 12 or so when it started getting a little bit more serious uh, in terms of the levels of soccer and caliber, caliber of soccer here in Vancouver. Uh, and I was able to make kind of a, a higher level team and started taking it a little bit more seriously. Um, and then, uh, yeah, uh, what, what came up when I was about 12 years old was a soccer academy, which there hadn't really been many soccer academies around Vancouver. Um, uh, you know, kind of back in the 70s or 80s, it was, there, was, there was a couple and they were usually English guys. I uh, can't think of the names off the top of my head. Um, but there's a lot of expats that live out here in Canada, especially out here in BC and Vancouver. And um, um, so there were a couple of academies, but nothing, nothing that was um, kind of uh, set for high caliber players. It was just kind of run of the mill summer camps. Um, so um, I was kind of from playing, you know, uh, growing up playing from three to age of 12 around Vancouver here in the, in the, in the different leagues, uh, youth leagues. Um, you know, there was a group of kids who were kind of, uh, you know, um, had potential to maybe go on and, and, and progress a little bit further. And so this, uh, um, this academy, the coach of this academy kind of headhunter scouted the different players from the different teams and pulled them all together to make um, to make the soccer academy. Uh, and um, I started training with them when I was about 12, uh, twice a week on top of my regular training sessions. So, I mean, my weeks were quite busy. Um, you know, I guess, you know, looking back on it and kind of being a teacher now, um, which I'll, I'll kind of get to and, and, uh, and kind of seeing what kids do these days, you know, I can kind of definitely attest to myself having quite a busy schedule uh, as a kid, um, you know, and being dedicated to, to a sport that I really enjoyed training twice to, twice a week with one club and then going training another two times with, uh, with the cat with uh, this academy and then usually a game on the weekend. So, you know, um, parents, my parents were definitely a, a huge help in chauffeuring, chauffeuring me around, um, uh, you know, to, to practice and, and to different sessions and, and obviously funding, you know, um, you know, uh, just, just as any youth sport requires usually a fee. <laughs> and, um, and so they were, you know, uh, parents were quite good and, and able to help me out as a, as a kid and, and fund my different um, soccer ventures and, and get me into the different teams and programs and whatnot. Um, but uh yeah i mean the the soccer academy uh, it was called roman tulis uh european soccer academy and um he was quite a, a popular guy around here from so he was from slovakia originally um 
so yeah, I mean, uh, he did he did wonders for myself, not just in terms of soccer, but just in terms of, of um, growing up and learning about respect and discipline and hard work and you know uh, work ethic and and, and um, you know uh, you know he was also a very um, big advocate for education. You know, as much as um, you know, you want to be a professional athlete or whatever, education always takes pre precedence and always takes the forefront. Um, so I was quite lucky to have him as a coach growing up. Um, kind of once I outgrew, um, you know, my dad was able to take me to a certain level, a certain level, a certain age, but, you know, obviously um, having other coaches, uh, you know, um, definitely helps and having high caliber coaches and, and coaches that cannot just help you with soccer, but also kind of give you other lessons uh, in life definitely helps right so um his coach was was one of a kind he's not around uh he's not with us uh anymore anymore god rest his soul um but he was uh, a great guy and had a huge impact in my life and many other kind of guys that i grew up playing with uh, in their life as well um and he's still kind of remembered around here and they do a and um you know uh every so often his his daughter who still runs the academy does kind of a um a memorial kind of tournament or game for him so um yeah uh he was he was had a big influence on kind of my soccer career and 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 what i was doing that with that uh kind of from about 12 to 18. um and uh yeah uh kind of went through the ranks here was able to make um you know with his help and just hard hard work and training and, and focus um was able to make the bc team the british columbia provincial team i don't know what that would be equivalent to in england maybe like some type of regional team and all maybe like an all all london or i don't know what the different um regions <laughs> are in england but um, obviously here in Canada we have the different provinces uh, so I was able to make what's called the provincial team or the BC team uh, from, when I, from when I was about 14 15 right through the years till I was about 17 or 18 um, so with that came a bit more exposure um, and uh, by the time I was 17 18 um, uh, you know uh, going off to if, if you're not kind of going to play professionally the next best thing like i said um education is is, is kind of you know um always at the forefront you need to have an education to fall back on in case your sport doesn't work so next best option if if you i wasn't getting scouted to go play uh for liverpool at, at the age of 17 was to try and get myself a scholarship off to university and and um fortunately um that happened there were some some coaches that came out from the states to watch some games here and um you know i like I said, was was doing quite well uh, at the time, and um, was able to get uh, get scouted and and picked up by uh, or noticed by a coach from a university back east in America in Vermont. Um, so um, was able to get myself a full scholarship um, to go to university in Vermont in the states, um, and did four years of college there playing soccer which was um, an amazing experience, um, you know, just to be able to um, go off to another country and have kind of all my expenses paid for at such a young age, at 17, leaving home, um, was, was uh, you know, a, a big step for me and a big learning experience, but um, again, one that, uh, one that really kind of helped me grow and, and, you know, learn a lot about myself and just a lot about dealing with people and, and chatting to people and, um, you know, uh, being able to socialize with people from all different walks of life because, uh, uh, and traveling will do that. <laughs> traveling will definitely do that and, and getting, you know, uh, being put out, outside of your zone um, kind of forces you to, especially when you're on your own, you don't have family around or friends around, you got to go make new friends and, and kind of assert yourself in a new setting and whatnot. So, um, yeah, off to college I went at 17. Um, and, uh, yeah, playing soccer there, traveling up and down the East Coast, um, playing in New York and um, uh, Connecticut and um, Maine and New Hampshire and all the all the, the New England area was, was pretty pretty neat and a pretty cool experience to get to see all that side of uh, of of the continent, you know, um, cause otherwise I don't know if I'd ever get to see the East coast. Um, cause I was, you know, Vancouver is, we're stuck out here on the West coast, feel quite isolated sometimes. So it was really nice to get to see the East coast and get up and down the East coast and, and just have that experience. Um, 
took science while I was there. I, science always came easy to, easy to me in, in high school uh, as opposed to business or, or you know, something like that. Um, so took science, ended up graduating with a degree in science. Um, um, but yeah, while I was there, um, you know, I was also by, by my last year there, uh, I was um, one of the captains of the team, which was, um, you know, I think a, a great honor. Uh, and I'm not too sure, uh, I'm not certain, but I mean, when and kind of thinking back on it now, and I never really kind of thought about it at the time, um, but I don't know how many black players the university actually had before me. Um, at least, and, and not only that, but black Canadian players. Um, I was one of maybe two or three Canadian players on the team, uh, but the only black player on the team. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's, it's something that didn't really hit me at the time, of, um, but kind of looking back on it and looking at old photos of previous years, of that university, the teams at that university, um, I don't ever remember seeing any black players in the squads. So that's something that, you know, uh, I'd, I've never thought about reaching, you know, I've never, I haven't reached out to the university to ask them, but it's something I've kind of, it's crossed my mind. Like if I were to reach out to them, ask, hey, you know, before me, did you ever have any black players in, in at the, attend the university and play, play soccer for you guys? Um, it would just be interesting to kind of know. Um, but, uh, yeah, um, had, a, had a successful four years there. Um, tied a school record for most goals in a game. I um, think most assists in a game. If you go onto their historical page, I think um, I'm in three different categories there for, for having set or equaled um, a couple of different um, in-game records, which was, you know, um, nice to kind of have my name you know, uh, kind of linked with the school for, you know, in, in the, in the record books, which is nice. And, um, um, also at that time, um, was, uh, was noticed by the Canadian soccer team, uh, the Canadian national team. Um, so just before I went to college, I, I went on a, um, I went on a, a basically a national training camp. Uh, we went down to the States. So this would have been the U18 Canadian national team. And uh, yeah, I traveled down to the States with them, um, did a training camp and, um, you know, first experience with, with, you know, in that type of setting with, with that type of, um, you know, uh, elite player around you and um, the, the best of the best in the country around you. So um, yeah, I did that while I was off, you know, just before I went to college in, in Vermont um, unfortunately, nothing really, never really kind of amounted to anything. Um, did the one, the one training camp, it might have been two training camps. Um, but uh, never really heard back from them. Thought, you know, um, something might come up uh, from that. But um, just never really heard back whether that was, um, you know, uh, I just wasn't the right fit for the, for, for the program or uh, wasn't up to par. Um, not, you know, nobody ever really got back to me to say, um, you know, thanks for coming out, but uh, we're going to look elsewhere or you need to keep progressing. Um, yeah, nothing was, was ever really kind of mentioned. Uh, and I knew there was, um, so, so yeah, was in college from 1999 to about 2003. And um, in 2001, there was the under 20 World Cup, which was being held down in Argentina. So I was about halfway through my college career at this point. And um, yeah, as, uh, like I said, I hadn't heard anything back from the, the Canadian national team. So I thought this is an opportunity I really want to be a part of. You know, World Cup is, especially at the under-20 level, um, you know, is something I'd, I'd love to take part in. And uh, knowing that, you know, having a belief in myself that I was at, at a level that I could compete and play at a World Cup or in a national squad was something that, you know, I, I really kind of had a firm belief in myself in. Uh, and just knowing where I, where, what I had accomplished up to that point and getting a, a scholarship and playing, playing down in the States, coming from Canada and playing in the States, um, you know, there weren't too many uh, Canadian players at that time, you know, enough. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, I was, there was definitely a short list of players that were, were abroad um, playing elsewhere other than Canada. So, 
Um, figured I'd have a, have a chance at making a national team. Unfortunately, Canada didn't work out. So I penned a, a, a letter up to Jamaica, obviously being a, a dual citizen, uh, father being from Jamaica. Um, did up a letter and sent it down to Jamaica, just explaining who I was and, and um, where I'm playing. And, and this is my background. And uh, any chance you think I could maybe come down for a tryout. So um, they said, sure. They flew me down for, for a tryout um, for... Uh, I was down there for a week uh, in Jamaica and Kingston and uh, training with the senior team. Uh, I thought I was going down to train with the under 20 team and I got there and it was the full senior team. <laughs> I thought, oh geez, oh, this should be interesting. <laughs> so uh, the under two, it was a mix of under 23 players and, and, uh, and, uh, and senior players, some that had uh, been a part of the team, you, you know, and, and uh, for for the last you know number of years that I've been watching on TV, and um, when they'd come out up to Canada to play against Canada out at Swan Guard Stadium, and um, I'd go out and watch the Jamaican team, and here I am now training with some of these players, right? So um, had a great experience, did really well while I was down there. I don't know if it was the food or the hot weather or what, or a combination of both, but um, played out of my skin and did really well, and they invited me back for um, a second camp a few months later um, to to uh, to compete with the under 20 players it's time the actual under 20 players uh, to to kind of earn a spot for the squad for the World Cup squad because they had they had already qualified for this junior World Cup this under 20 World Cup so um, yeah uh, went back down there for I was down there for about a month and a half training um, Eight every day up at seven for a training because it's so hot down there you up at seven for training by half seven or eight to get the first training session in you go back have a nap eat lunch eat breakfast or whatever and then back out in the evening for a training session again in the evening at six or seven once it cools off um and before before it gets too dark so um it was it was heavy going but again another great experience and made some good friends out of it friends some guys i still keep in touch with to to this day um, even though we haven't seen each other in years, um, just having that bonding experience and, um, you know, uh, you, you make really good quality friends out of it. Um, so was there for, yeah, about a month and a half. Training camp went well um, and was selected to the team. And uh, off we went to to the Under-20 World Cup in Argentina. And that was in 2001. Um uh, yeah, what an experience that was playing against, uh, got to play against Egypt, got to play against Finland uh, and Argentina as well, who were the hosts. Um, so playing in a stadium, uh, you know, with fanatical Argentinian fans, 30,000 30, 30, of them uh, all cheering on the whole, you know, their, their country uh, was quite, you know, um, quite an eye-opening experience and, and just, uh, yeah, um, an experience just kind of send, sends shivers up your spine, um, you know, walking into a stadium with 30,000 people in it. Um, unfortunately, not cheering for us, cheering for the other team. But, um, yeah, so that was, that was pretty neat. Uh, Argentina went on to win the tournament. Um, they had a couple of players in their squad that um, uh, think one of them by the name of Saviola ended up going to play for Barcelona. Another one of them, I think it was D'Alessandro, ended up playing with Portsmouth in England. And one of the defenders, Colacini, ended up playing with Newcastle. So that's the type of team we were up against uh, when I was playing, uh, when, when we came up against them in the World Cup there. Um, so, yeah, once that, once that, um, kind of, once that World Cup, uh, World Cup um, concluded, I went back to university. Uh, like I said, that was kind of about halfway through college. So went back and finished up my, my last couple of years in university playing, uh, playing there. Um, what was, um, what was interesting and, and what kind of came about as well as, you know, having that opportunity to play in the world cup. Um, what, you know, they say soccer, you know, well, it, it's a funny sport. It's a small world, um, the soccer world. Um, and a lot of it is luck and timing and being in the right place in the right time. And it just so happened when I was in Jamaica, um, there was uh, a guy from Belgium um, who was out at a game. He was down there scouting some games. Um, so we had a game, <clears throat> training game off in Port Antonio against some all-star team, Jamaican all-star team they had put together for us to play against. And um, there was a couple of scouts there, one of them being from Belgium. And... Uh, 
So roll it back a couple of years, back to the academy that I had um, played with from kind of 12 to 18 here in Vancouver, uh, Roman Toulis. Um, when we were about 16 or 17, he took us over to Europe. He took us over to Belgium to play a few games and uh, try and get some exposure over there. We played against a club called Circle Bruges, which is a, a top team in Belgium. We played against a youth team and, um, you know, there was some coaches there watching the game and whatnot. And, um, and uh, <laughs> 2001, when I'm down training in Jamaica, and um, there's a couple of scouts there, and they were from Belgium. So I kind of approached one of them after the game and said, oh, you know, I've been over to Belgium before um, with this coach, Roman Toulis. And he says, turns around and says, oh, I know Roman Toulis. Uh, what? <laughs> How do you know Roman Toulis, um, this coach from Vancouver? Um, and so just through chatting, he was actually involved with Cirque du and had been at the game um, however many years prior to when we went over to Belgium. And um, we weren't sure, but we thought that it's possible we'd, we'd actually chatted to each other before. So anyways, um, made that contact while I was there in Jamaica training and prepping for the World Cup. And he kind of said, you know, give me a call once you finish college. Give me a call. I'll be back in Belgium. I'm a coach over there. Uh, and I have some connections. So um, once, uh, once that World Cup finished and, and went back to school, finished up my last couple of years of college, I gave this coach a ring and he said, sure, um, you know, um, why don't you come over for a tryout? Uh, he was involved. He was a coach of a team over in Belgium uh, in a place called Brusselaar, which is just outside of Bruges. Um, so I went over, um, I went over to Belgium directly from college, uh, packed up my bags. <laughs> I had one big hockey bag. Um, I didn't have any suitcases at the time, graduating college. And I, you can imagine over the course of four years, I've, collected and amassed uh, uh, quite a bit of junk and stuff and books and clothes and whatnot so I thought how the heck am I gonna get all this stuff over to over to Europe so I went went out to a thrift store and bought myself a secondhand hockey bag big hockey bag no compartments and and I just rammed this thing as <laughs> got as much as I could in it and um and uh, got myself a one-way ticket over to Belgium um so I flew over um and uh I would have been yeah, summer of 2003, I think it was. Um, flew over to Belgium and, uh, yeah, went for a tryout. Um, fingers crossed that it all went well, and it did. I was there for a month or so before they offered me a contract. Um, and uh, and uh, that was my first kind of, um, you know, professional contract and, and, um, and, and uh, you know, kind of how I got to that level. Um, yeah, I'm sure I'm missing a, a, a few things there <laughs> and, uh, you know, a couple of things that helped get me there, but, um, yeah, it was, uh, that was quite an experience just kind of going over on my own to it again, uh, a, a country I'd been to before when I was younger. Um, but, uh, again, a new country with new people and a, a completely different language, um, uh, and having to kind of. Um, prove myself there and, and go over and show my skills and whatnot uh, was, was quite an experience. Um, but a, a good one, uh, a good one. And again, um, made some friends there that are, you know, uh, played with some guys there that have been, been, you know, become some of my best friends still and keep, keep in touch with today. And uh, anytime I, I'm over in Europe, I definitely try to get back to Belgium to catch up with them and, and see them and see their families and whatnot. So, um, yeah, that was uh, that was a that was a great period of kind of my life. Just kind of finally, uh, after putting all in all the work from you know kind of age three to uh, all the way up to kind of to that point, um, finally signing a, a professional contract and um, making money to 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 get paid to you know and, and getting paid to do what I what I loved was um, was just awesome. You know, uh, yes, uh, I guess you know I got. I, I got a scholarship to college, which was paid for, but I wasn't actually receiving a paycheck to my bank account to, to play soccer. So once, uh, um, I mean, that was, that was great, the, the college experience, but once, um, once I was able to sign a professional contract and actually see a check, you know, uh, that was my job. It was, it was, it was quite, um, it's quite satisfying to know like, this is, this is, um, you know, this is where I've gotten to, you know, and had always been a goal of mine. Um, 
to 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 sign with a professional team and and so it was uh yeah uh just a dream come true and a great experience and um uh yeah unfortunately it didn't last it didn't last uh longer um but uh i had a great run at it and and did it for a couple of years and um and uh you know, it's something that that'll always be with me, right? And 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 has given me, uh, um, given a lot back to me as well. Uh, kind of as I've gone through my years, all, you know, everything's kind of getting getting to that point. Everything it's kind of taught me, and and um, not just the successes, but I'd say more so the failures. The what you know, what I didn't, what I didn't achieve, and what I didn't do, uh, I probably learned the most from, um, and what I could have done. Uh, different and things I could have done differently I've probably learned more from looking back on um but it's 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 uh you know the if you put if you put yourself into something uh whether it's a sport whether it's uh, a business um whatever it might be you know the end of the day it'll it'll give back to you right and um I feel that's kind of where I'm at now uh with with soccer and um you know, teaching was just something that I hadn't anticipated and, and expected to go into teaching or, or coaching. Um, but, uh, you know, once I kind of finished playing soccer and, and, and came home from Belgium or came, came back from Europe, um, tried my hand at a, at a few different things, worked a warehouse job. I think I did car sales, um, worked for an IT company, did um, IT call support. Um, I I ran the whole gauntlet of, of jobs trying to figure out what it is now you want to do because as a as an athlete and as a kind of you know especially playing at a high level um, you know uh, whether it's hockey basketball Olympic sport that's what you identify as right you're you're somebody asks you what do you do well I'm a soccer player I'm an athlete right but once that finishes you know it, it's it's you've now got to kind of find a new identity right so um you know spent a, a number of years trying to trying to figure out what it is you know what other what i what else i had a passion for you know um and uh just kind of you know went through these different roles and i'd find myself in these different roles and be like you know my mind wandering elsewhere you know uh, just because it was they weren't keeping me engaged so figured you know i need to go i need to figure something out and um i just kind of put two and two together with, with my background, my, my experience, what I, what I enjoyed doing. Uh, and I knew I liked, I liked working with kids. I, I get along with kids. I have a good rapport with kids. So I just figured teaching might be something I could try. Um, so, uh, signed up for a program, uh, the a teaching program, um, which happened to be back in the States, long story, which I won't really go into, but um, had to go back to the States to, to do a teaching program. Uh, it was a year program. So I did that uh, and came back to Canada um, and, and, and uh, started kind of doing the teaching thing. Uh, and with the teaching, um, start, you know, it's funny, uh, I was actually my first teaching role that I was hired for was for a soccer academy. They saw my um, soccer experience on my resume and said, well, we've got this role for you. It's, it's at a high school, but it's not teaching. It's, uh, it's coaching at a soccer for this high school soccer academy. So I thought, okay, well, that's interesting. Um, so with that, it not only did it kind of open the doors for me teaching, but also kind of open the doors for me coaching as well. And uh, one thing kind of led led to another from there. Got uh, went and did my my coaching certificate, uh, um, which is here. They're called over there. You've got the UEFA B. I guess our equivalent here is called uh, um, or the UEFA licenses over here. It's called the CSA or national. So I think oh, um, you have what you've got your UEFA B, or UEFA C, UEFA B, UEFA A, and then your pro license. Uh, and um, Right now, I guess I'm at the equivalent of a UEFA B. I'm done, I've done the, what's called the CSA or National B here in Canada. Um, so the next step for me would be to do the UEFA B 
and then the UEFA A or CSA A license, um, and then maybe a pro license. But whether I want to do that, I'm not too sure. <laughs> I'm quite happy with with the amount of uh, you know uh, with the coaching certificate that I've got at the moment, and and it kind of sees me through. Um, but yeah, the coaching um, uh, kind of came about uh, at the same time as the teaching, uh, and um, it was just nice to it, it was. It was a way to keep myself involved with soccer. Um, it, you know, having just done it all my life, uh, it, it, it's, it's, I guess it's something that, um, yeah, it, it just seems normal to me, <laughs> uh, just having soccer in my life. And, uh, and um, yeah, uh, it, it just kind of coincides well with, with the teaching as well uh, and kind of helping others learn what I've learned. Uh, and sharing what you know what I've learned along the way um, with kids and uh, yeah it's just nice nice to be able to give back like I said keep me involved with the game and and um, and help others you know maybe progress and to to and help help them achieve their goals and, and their dreams you know so um, so it's been good it's been it's been good uh, um, yeah how uh, how far I want to go with the coaching I'm not sure uh, like I said, I'm quite happy kind of doing what I'm doing, working for a local club here um, through a, a contact and a, a friend of mine um, that I that I made kind of through through my years in soccer. He runs a soccer club here as the head guy for a soccer club here. So that's a this club here, Vancouver <laughs> Football Club. Um, it's a club I, I'm, I'm kind of working for and coaching for at the moment. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's it's been a good experience, kind of up to this point in getting 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 here, uh, and uh, you know, we were able to um, obviously Michael knows kind of my my soccer background and now coaching and whatnot, and obviously with his kickoff at three stuff, um, yeah, we were able to last year get involved with. I was able to get so I coach boys and girls. Um, I was able to get the the girls team involved with uh, a kickoff at three a kickoff at three event that Mike was putting on or helping you know helping organize um, uh, called spin off at three uh, and this was right when the kind of beginning of pandemic when um, stuff had kind of been uh, been shut down and um, weren't able to get out and do the the soccer tournaments and and uh, weren't able to kind of have uh, face to face you know. Uh, contact was being starting to be limited so this was another way uh i believe that kickoff at three was able to kind of get people out and get people involved for um i think it was uh homeless or there were different different causes but i think this one was a, a homeless uh um, kind of drive for the homeless around st albans and might have been a few different areas uh or boroughs around around england or london um, so we got involved with that, got the girls out on the bike, <laughs> got a few pictures along the way, a um, couple of videos uh, to send back to Michael to, to just kind of show our support. Um, but it was, it was uh, you know, the girls enjoyed it. Uh, it, it, was, it felt good to, to get involved with some, especially something that's uh, across the pond. Um, you know, it was pretty neat to, to get involved with from, from, from Canada. Um, so it's... Um, yeah, it's it, it's a uh, it's a good position. Uh, I feel like I'm in now, being able to coach and teach and be involved with with kids and still be involved with soccer and 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 earn a living from it. So still earn a living from it, you know. Um, so it's uh, it's it's been good. It's been a good experience. It's been a good journey. Um, yeah, I, I'm sure there's some stuff I've left out and little, little stuff, little details I've left out. But um, yeah, getting here is it's. Uh, you know, you, you don't really, um, you know, know where you'll end up when, when you, when you start a project or start, you know, start going after your goal. You don't know if you're going to achieve it or what might come of it, but, um, you know, it's, uh, it's all kind of worked out quite nicely for me. And, you know, there's been, there's been obstacles, there's been tough times, there's been bumps, there's been lots of times where I put it, had to put in work and, and, uh, and, and really motivate, uh, motivate myself and take risks and take chances and whatnot. But um, it's, it's all been for the good, you know, uh, and I'll come good. So, yeah, yeah.